Hi all. Right, uh, yeah, I'm straight back after the last bit that you've seen. Um, but it's one of the ones where we'll see. I'm not sure I'll complete all this. So the last two cars in the German draw pile. Um, so there we go. There's a two. Here's a one. Right. So no event on the support card. So we move right to the command card and try and activate. Uh, well, not try. There's not. Yeah, there's not a condition for them activating, is there? If there is, I've just been <laughs> randomly activating them, haven't I? Um, no, I don't think. Uh, when a German command card calls for the activation of a German formation, conduct the activation in the following sequence of steps. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to um, activate. Uh, oh, where am I? No, it's all fifth Panzer Army units I've activated there. I just started panicking there, thinking I've been forgetting about uh, objective markers, but no. First of all, we... One sec. Pan out and go across. I think the first one we'd done was uh, 66, which caused all the trouble with the core marker and um, the army markers and who flies and then it's only been fifth panzer army units that we've activated yeah so well we're going to do something different well i would have read through it and probably would have got it uh so the first bit is remove allied roadblock markers adjacent well, there's none of that and then the next bit is check the location of objective marker for the army to which the active units belong so we're going to get the same situation here, are we? Is it them that... Yeah, it is. It's them that's got the core marker, so... Uh, bring the card over here. We can have a look. So we've got the core marker for 80 core, but we've still... We've not placed the 7th Army marker yet either. So... Um, and the Seventh Army one just has a west or a south, obviously, because it's down the bottom of the map. And I think the Sixth Army has a west and a north, isn't it? Because it's up the top. Yeah. Okay. Uh, right. Okay. Right. So the so we're now well we're gonna the objective markers aren't on the on, on the board yet, so we're gonna put them on the board. So the core marker just gets put in the hex. Was that two five zero five? So it's down there in Konsdorf. Just on the camera there, yeah, way down the bottom. So again, that will stay there until there's no allied units within three of it, and then it gets removed from the game. But because we've not played the seventh arm, and I was thinking back to this, I know I said there's nothing in the rules to say that um, you should place this marker and this marker when they both get at. Well, not well. The kind of I suppose that there kind of is because this is this is part of the seventh army. Anyway, it's really irrelevant. Um, this markers it doesn't really ma matter when you place these markers. As long as you roll the dice, randomise where they're going to go. I mean, in all honesty, it could be part of the setup, I think. You know, it could be part of the setup that you just roll the dice and decide where they go. Um, well, possibly not. It might alter the Allies' strategy, I suppose. So, um, Not that you've got much of a strategy at the beginning, really. Uh, however, yeah. Uh so we're going to roll a dice for this. Let me just check. Okay, so I'm just going to roll this off camera. Oh, I can probably chuck it on the camera. Um, yeah. right, I've got a seven. So I think that's that's the second one. Um, seventh Army, one to six is Edelbrook South. Seven to nine is Mersh West. So there was Edelbrook. 
where is Mersh? Um, ah, it's down, so it's further south. Oh, maybe you can't even see it. Oh, sorry. Right, so yeah, Elbrook was there, Mersh is there, so that's keeping them even slightly further south. Um, so it, it does mean that the 85th core units are going to be concentrating further down here. Where's Elbrook? Yeah, that's probably... Well, is it better for us? They're probably going to have to come through this area anyway. So what did I say? Mersh West. So it's going on the west side. So there we go there. Okay. So that's the that's objective Marcus placed. And... Um, yeah, as I've just talked about that, I'm going to go along with uh, how I feel and what Martin Martin's thinking was as well, that this should take priority. If there's anything talking about this core doing anything regarding an objective, I feel like it should be this objective. Until this is removed, then it's this army objective, but... Hopefully, I was, I was going to repost that uh, question I had, but it was worded in a different way. It'd be better putting it together differently and then maybe refreshing it and uh, bringing it up again. Maybe John might spot it and confirm uh, what, we're, what we're trying to find out with that one. Okay, so... Right, let's see what's happening next. Okay, so we're going to attempt to move the units within the core, within 80 core. Um... Not with within nine point two though, but nine nine point two three because it's this is moving units with a core objective. Um, so they move according to these rules specific to them instead of the methods in nine point two. So, um, right, we're checking in ascending order. One at a time. Um, now it says here check this. This is always slightly baffled me a bit. You, you know what though? Uh, no, it's just clicked actually. It says check German units with a core objective marker one at a time in ascending numerical order before checking any units moving via the normal movement methods. And I think the reason I was thinking, well, how can that be? All these units are um, got a core objective. Um, well, there will be times um, when it's not just this core that's activated, like if an army group card or the army card, it might affect other units from a different core. So pretty sure that's why that word is like that. So you would check these units first, and then you would check the other units via the normal movement methods. So, yeah, that makes sense. Um, so we're yeah we've done this before with the sixty six core didn't we? So move each unit toward an allied unit within three hexes of the core objective marker, entering a hex adjacent to the unit if possible. Okay. Okay, so we we're, we're looking at um this unit first, selector number one. Um. So both these allied units are within three of our core objective and they're both two hexes away from this unit so um, if more than one allied unit is an eligible target move toward the nearest then the easternmost so they're both as near as each other um, but this one is easternmost so uh, it then says, well, basically we could move here or we could move here. So it then says, if able to reach more than one hex adjacent to an allied unit, move to a hex that would cause the allied unit to become surrounded, then to a non-occupied hex, then to the easternmost hex. So this hex is unoccupied, this one is not. So as we talked about, I don't know if you remember, set up these two units switch places. And uh, that was allowed. That was to allow the stronger unit to be able to come across the river there, and yeah, maybe do something to upset us. 
Um, so again, these are bound by. Now this was part of the question I asked that didn't get the answer. Give me a sec. Yeah, my original question, which unfortunately the the follow up question that I asked afterwards was probably more important to us, and it was it was the whole question about do you consider well actually it says when the three cores when the three cores that have got core objectives come across any rule that states closer to army objective, i.e. advance of combat, do they consider the army or the core objective? That was probably the more important question, but it was added on, but unfortunately none of them got a response. Um, so like I say, I'm going to probably chuck that up there again. And um, I know maybe Martin had, unless maybe he hadn't seen that, I, I get the feeling he had and he was probably like, not sure himself because um, he didn't want to go go against his rules as written. <laughs> uh, but um, possibly not. He might just not have seen it. <laughs> okay. Uh, but the original question was that the Arata states that 9.23, which is moving units, which is what we're doing just now, moving units with, with core objectives, that the movement and restrictions of 9.21 do apply. So obviously that'd been something that hadn't been clarified within the rule book that you still consider the the restrictions. So we'll look at that in a second. I mean, this unit come a few either. It's not, the restrictions aren't broken. But my question was, does 9.22 movement method tiebreakers also apply to the core objectives um, and it must have been a situation I came across so yeah what I'm saying is that the tiebreakers talk about um, where are the tiebreakers movement method ah, 9.22 yeah if more than one destination hex meets the requirements move to hex closest to units army objective blah 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 so thing with that one is that talks about army objective marker too so yeah um which if it was relevant it should be stating again i think that's where uh, if their intention was it should have been objective you know whatever the relevant objective marker is um anyway i never got a reply to both of them so i'm not sure about that i'm i'm guessing it is because if, if the restrictions were part of the core uh, movement, then I would have thought the tiebreakers were too. So I'm going to go with that. Um, if, it, if it comes up, I'm only talking about it just now because, uh, yeah, I don't know. Come on time, come on time. Like, you need that, don't you? <laughs> There's enough time ticking away there, Grant. Okay, um... So he is going to move there. Yeah, it's because we were going to check the restrictions. That was it. And, and that was unclear in the rule book, but it's clear in the So there's, but there's no, he's not breaking any restrictions. So we then move on to the next unit, um, which would be what we got. We've got a five, six and a seven. So select a number five here. But he's, he's already adjacent to an allied unit. And I'm pretty sure we clarified that the last time. I did start thinking, can he move into different hexes, maybe? But no, it's only when you move adjacent to an allied unit that you consider different hexes. If you're already adjacent, this is the core objective movement. It might be different when the, the main movement rules, they might do something different, but when the core objective, he's just going to sit there. So, which also means unit number six is going to sit there. So, we've got unit number seven. So, what can he do? So, yeah, so, and I think this is why this movement set up like this. Um, I think as the Germans, it's also quite a good move when you activate this core to maybe move down here. 
and then you can cross this river and surround that guy. Um, which I think I've tr I've tried before, yeah. Um, however, he's not able to do that. So, and I think yeah, you you're going to have an extra impulse to do that because he's got to move down, and then he's got to activate it to move across. So it's a, two separate impulses. So this is the closest unit. He can reach two different hexes adjacent to it. This one's unoccupied. So unless he's breaking any restrictions, which he's, which he's not, he's going to cross the river too. So now we've got a bit of a situation where we've got seven strength here, which is already across the river and also supported by another two strength, which would be halved across the river attacking that unit. So, yes. Um, so, one sec. Uh, okay, so now I think we're going to check for attack determination again. So, this is unit selector number one. He can attack this. This is an active unit, can participate. This is an active unit, can participate. So we've got these three units. Um, no reserves. Does the support card show assault coordination? It doesn't. Um, it, well, that wouldn't matter. To get, well, it wouldn't matter for this part, shall we say. Um, so let's check the situational strength. Uh, right, so half coming across the river, so this would be halved to a one, and then we've got a full eight, uh, seven, sorry, so eight in total, so eight against three. Um, is this in a forest? No. Preposition, no adjacent to spy unit, no clear terrain, no, no, he's getting nothing. Um, so we have... 8 to 3, so 2 to 1 odds, so we're going to have to roll a dice, because it's between 1 to 1 and 4 to 1, so let's have a look at that, and uh, what is it, our modifiers are minus 1 for 16th of December, uh, they're not attacking the elites, it wasn't an army army group card. Support card shows an applicable combat attack. Uh, right, it's reinforced battle. So I don't think that is applicable. Uh, well, you know what? Maybe it is, actually. Give me a sec. Yeah, actually, a reinforced battle is, is applicable because... Um, this unit could break away for two in here and then another one in here to reinforce uh, the combat. Um, yeah. Okay, so that's another minus one. I don't think I'm missing in there. Is he breaking any rules by doing that? Um, it doesn't within rein, within the reinforced battle uh, tactic. It doesn't say you know, even if he was opening up a gap there, which he isn't by the way, because this unit couldn't stroll across there because the still zone of control. So, so okay, so that's a minus two we've got to the die roll then. So let's roll the dice and see what we get. Oh my, we're <laughs> really low with these rolls. That's like three threes and a two we've rolled, I think. So, um, yeah. Well, I'll maybe get them out of the way now while it's just the weak, weak attacks we're getting. <laughs> Although, mm, this one could be, yeah. Well, well, we'll see. We might be able to hold our ground. So, Right, we'll do the roll of three, minus two, so it's a one. So cancel if only the defender is elite or only the defender is armoured. 
so both is not the case. It's a wine unit and it's infantry. So if this had been armoured, they were all infantry, then you would have cancelled. Even at that low a roll, it's uh, basically saying, uh, no. Um, okay, so we're going to have an attack again. Okay, I was just looking through there and just about to say, well, we can't, there's no more cards to draw for a combat tactic. And I was just about to think, oh, well, that's good. We don't draw a combat tactic. But I've got a horrible feeling that we shuffle the deck up just to draw that combat tactic. <laughs> so I'm just trying to find it. It's not jumping out of me here. Yeah, unfortunately I have. It's a uh, 12 point. 3-8 German deck exhaustion. If the German deck is exhausted when a combat tactic draw is called for, reshuffle the deck only for the purpose of drawing combat tactics. This reshuffle does not extend uh, German impulses. So we're going to reshuffle here and draw one card, but it doesn't then mean that the draw pile is like full of cards again. <laughs> Uh, okay, so we've shuffled up. Let's see what we get. And it's, it's reinforced battle. Oh, that's not what we wanted to see, I don't think, because that means they're going to have another impulse on it. I believe, because it's a reinforced battle that's in the, uh, the support card's reinforced battle. So now we won't play that because it. It matches, yes, yes. Yeah, this is this is the only unit that can reinforce, and um, it's kind of wasted. It's going to give an extra chip pool, I suppose, but what did I say? Oh, no, it's not. There you go. It's going to boost the strength by another one, isn't it? Giving them three to one odds instead of two, so there you go. So... This infantry unit can go one, two, breaking zone of control, and then three into there. And uh, we've already decided there's going to be an attack, so this unit's going to have activated two, and so is this. Now, there's no mention of it being restricted to doing that, that I can see. Um, so it's just going to do it. There we go. It needs to be from the Seventh Army, which it is. It's from the same core, so. Um, yeah, okay. And then we look at um, the support card. But because it is um, the same, it's a reinforced battle, we, we're not going to play that. So we're not going to play this because it's a reinforced battle. So um, what that then means is once we're done with this impulse, that card's going to go, and we're going to act, we're going to activate this as a command card. But we'll get around to that. Although I might might be tomorrow. <laughs> um, if it all if it all went smooth there, we would have been ending the day almost. But uh, we'll see. Um, so what we've we got now, we can play a combat tactic ourselves now bear in mind they're gonna they have no cards left so but i already said as long as they empty their you know if, if they play their last card on their impulse we we can still have another impulse i'm pretty sure that was right wasn't it yeah, if German cards run out during the German impulse, complete the impulse, then conduct one allied impulse. So, uh, well, to be honest, I can't, I can't play that as a combat tactic anyway. It's air power, which isn't available yet. So, yeah, I'm just going to have to go with what's what's there. So, so now they've got five, six, seven, and they've got four reduced across the river to two so that's nine to three so they've got three to one odds with that reinforce and they're also going to get an extra chip pool so they're going to get one two three let's double check it's the same yeah 
So one, two, three, four, one for the extra, for the four step unit is five, and one for the reinforced battle is six. Uh, no elites, no. Okay, so six chip pulls. Well, it's not too bad actually, six chip pulls, three to one odds. Yeah, it's all infantry. The good thing is we're, we're in a town, so we're gonna soak one hit up. Ooh. Right. Let's just hope that <laughs> that rule is the same. I've never looked at that, have I? Um, give me a second. Okay, phew. <laughs> it is. Uh, I did not look at that at all, though. Um, I suppose... Let's just say I remember it from playing Ally Solo before. We'll go with that one. And uh, no, I didn't look. So um but it is the same. Yes, indeed. Okay. Uh hold on, that's brought something else back to me just as I'm reading that. And I'm pretty sure you would have caught it because I've I talked about it. So um Oh god, I think I need to go back and look. I've shuffled the deck up now as well, haven't I? Because of the extra combat tactic. Um, I get the feeling that um, Assault Coordination was played here. Wasn't it? Right, well, if I make the comment of it now within this video, then I mean, I'll not need to add anything. Um, so <laughs> what I can do is just that, um, well, I talked about it as well, the fact that um, assault, if they play Assault Coordination, the Germans, anyway, just for the Germans, um, they get to ignore one hit. And they took a hit in this battle Was it that one? Was it? I can't. If I could have looked back in the cards, but I've just shuffled them up. I probably would have sussed it out. But um, hmm. And if I will, I remember. Probably I'm going to see it in the video before I upload it. So. Well, you know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna I'm gonna reinstate that guy to his full strength because I can't I can't remember hundred percent. It is like I say one of the late at night events here. After a couple of beers <laughs> or three, um. So I reinstate that guy. Because I don't think he should have took the hit because the Germans had played assault coordination in that battle. If I've got that wrong, I can reduce, reduce him again. So, yeah, it's just I noticed that when I was looking at um, whatever it was I was looking at. Okay, so let's get back to finishing off this combat and we can sort that one out later. Where is it? It's down here, yeah. Okay, so we're just going to draw six chits. Um, yeah, so we'll get six chits and we'll see what happens. Uh, okay, there we go. Um, yeah, not such a great result. I mean, I don't know, maybe it doesn't look that bad, but I was hoping to just get a D1 result. Hopefully get something to keep me there, but... Um, yeah, a couple of flank attacks. Remember, this is a town, so it doesn't benefit from that. The front of this one was 7 to 1 odds. And uh, no elites in the attack, but no green units in the attack. And this is, it's not a large attack, but it is on the 16th, so there we go. So there we go, one hit to him, two to us. We soak up one for the town. So now decisions to make. 
Do we sit there and take the step loss in the town? Or do we retreat? And we have to retreat into this hex here. Which is a broken hex. Hmm. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't like the idea. Of it. It's going to allow both these units to come across the... Uh, or does it? You know what? We we wouldn't be able we wouldn't be allowed to do that in the German. So two two units advancing across a broken bridge. I don't think. Uh, yeah, I need to look at that. I, I get the feeling they're not restricted and probably would be able to, but. But then we'd probably be considering this unit first, which is selector number one. It depends on the arrows. Well, there's a forward arrow there, isn't there? And it's into a town as well, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, I mean, I'm not keen on taking the step or so, but... Right, let me know what you think. Yeah, you know what, I think... The right thing is to actually take the step loss and stay in the town. Because uh, we still exert zone of control. And if we if we retreat to here, they, they can start, you know, they can move. Maybe not quite surround us there, but then these guys get across the river. Um, and we're still in the town, so we can soak, that soaks up a hit. Whereas we're back here. We're two steps, but we're not able to soak up that hat. So, yeah, I'm gonna go with that. I'm gonna go with that. Um. So the allies have got. To, uh, sorry, the Germans have got to take one hat. Ooh, right. Okay. This. So this is a situation where, because he's got a four-step unit in the. So I think it. It's that unit that takes it. Yeah. It straight up says. Uh, uh, it's got to take. Well. It's, Got to take the first hit as a step loss. And then, excuse me, it says um, if there's a four step unit, that's the one that takes the step loss. So there we go. So, and Assault Coronation wasn't played in that battle. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure, pretty sure that unit, we did reduce that unit illegally. So, I will double check. Um, but, yeah. I think I did, did jump in there and forget about it after talking about it as well. It's funny how you talk about these things and then whoosh, you forget all about them. Uh, okay, so that is finished. That goes in the discard pile. Um, all the core have been activated, so there's none of that nonsense about... Um, Reserves, jumping into reserves. Um, yeah, that's all good. But now we've got a support card still left and the support card, German support card box. So we'll see how that works. Yeah, so within 8.1 uh, part three, it says second impulse. Um, and basically says that if if the support card is still in the support card box um, upon completing the command on the command card which is where we're at move the support card to the command card box and immediately repeat step 2 using this new command card in this way the German side will sometimes conduct two impulses in a row although there will be no support card available for the second impulse yeah so we're using that but there's no support card but sometimes you get that anyway when the event's played but um okay so basically we're going to carry out the command on this card um which is activate the first ss panzer and this 12th ss panzer of first ss panzer corps um, but unfortunately, guys, that's going to be too much for me tonight because um, 
that's a bit, there's a bit involved in that, even though it's um, not the full core, it's enough. <laughs> so, and this video's gone on long, quite long as well, but um, yeah, I've enjoyed the wee session the night there, though, it's been good. Um, hope I've not gone on too too much, but um, uh, so yeah, I did, did kind of hope we would finish the day there. So I'm going to have to come back with another small video. Well, yeah, it should be small enough. The, this this will involve a wee bit, though. I would think uh, I mean, Piper's part of the first SS. So, well, you can see there's six units involved there, though. So, the 12th SS, yeah, they're not... Ah, the other first SS units are further back. So, yeah, sorry, maybe I should give you a look at... I'm talking about I might as well show you um, the oh, sorry I'm stretching the first SS there must be two of them in there and then the Piper's in there and then the 12th SS are up there so six, six units and they're strong units obviously um, so something will happen maybe maybe more than one attack to be honest but um yeah, but I don't have the the time left to uh, carry this out. Now, I'll need to also remember that that um, <laughs> this draw this uh, draw pile isn't wait. We're not going through that, <laughs> going through that all again. Although more than likely we're going to have to draw from that to get a combat tactic for any combats that. Uh, turn up uh, we're activating the units so so I'll leave it as as um I'm sure I'll remember but okay I better leave it for now guys um and I'll be back with that second impulse of the Germans which will be their last impulse of the day and we've got one more card to finish off with to complete the day so Okay, be back um, tomorrow at some point, guys. Cheers. Hi, all. Right, there's a reminder of the situation. Um, uh, the Germans have one last card. Remember, we did reshuffle the draw pile, but that was just to draw combat tactics, so we don't need to worry about having to go through all these cards. So they've only got one more card left. They may well draw other combat tactics for this impulse. But this will be the last impulse. And what happens is that moves from the support card box to the command card. And then we act activate that as a command. I spoke about that last night. Um, so we're going to activate the 1st SS Panzer Division and the 12th SS Panzer Divisions. So there's six units involved here. So I'll move the camera up. And uh, also, just as a quick reminder, that's the last card we've got in our hand. So we will get to act this impulse out after they completed their impulse um, we do get one final impulse and then the day will end so I'll move the camera up and we'll have a look what's what ok so here's the units up here there's two of the first SS units in that stack it's also stacked with that other unit which doesn't have a division I don't think um, the other first SS unit is the Piper unit here and there's three. There's the three 12th SS units um, there so not adjacent to roadblocks that can be removed. Um, then we've got to check the location of the objective marker. Well, the six Panzer Army objective marker has not been placed yet. So here it is here. Uh, it can either go west or north, show a west or north side. So, um, I might be able to show you the dice roll. Not that it's terribly relevant. I'm not going to. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to roll the dice for that. So we've got a 10 for the 6 Panzer Army at St. Vith North. So that's where that's going to go. Ooh, so that's way down south, isn't it? Where were the options? Um, I went in the right one, yeah. It was Malmody West. Yeah, so it was either here or it's just a hex number, 0408. 
which is further north, that's there. So the options were either there, there, or down in St. Birth. So it came up with St. Birth, and what did I say, north? Yeah, six pounds army, St. Birth north. So there we go. Um, I'll probably put the roadblock on top of that, just so we remember that's still there. Um, okay, so we've done that. And now we're going to attempt to move these two divisions. Uh, let's see where they go. Okay, I managed to get all the way down, right shooting movement method 11, um, which is uh, move closer to army objective. Nothing else seemed to apply there. Um, if I've missed one, then let me know, but uh, there's no infantry involved, so five to nine were just skipped right over anyway. Um, so, again, we're looking at these in ascending order. And, well, in actual fact, I should have been looking at movement method 10. So we should be looking at the Piper unit. He can't follow his movement arrows. He wouldn't be able to spend the movement. So can he move to hex closer to the unit's army objective? Um, possibly, yeah. I think he can come out and that'd be one, two, and another four out there. So at the moment, one, two, three, four, five. If he was in there, one, two, three, four. So it does look like it's like a kind of odd kind of move, but I think the fact that our army objectives went away down here, it's going to maybe adjust some of the thinking. But you know what? possibly a better idea of them coming through here. This feels, you know, further north just seems to be a bit of a, it's difficult to break through up there, you know, if you remember ourselves, we, well, we did eventually get to um, Bervais, didn't we? Um, okay, so, okay, so looking at this, it, he's got two possible hexes that are going to be closer to his army objective. This one here, because he can go one, two, and then four back in the forest, like we said. He could also come in beside this unit, so one, two, three into there. Um, both the hexes, both they're, they're both end up four hexes away from the. But that's not what we're actually considering at the moment. Uh, it does say if more than one hex is closer. Move to a hex adjacent to an allied unit against which the moving unit has a combat strength advantage of at least 3 to 1. Include in this calculation all German units adjacent to the target, all active units in the reserve units box, and all active on map units proximate to the target that have not yet moved yet. Not yet moved. Um, yeah. Um, well, both the hexes are going to be adjacent to this unit. Don't think we are going to get 3 to 1 odds, though. Um, it doesn't. Doesn't mention a, a situational calculation with that. Um, it just says strength advantage of at least three to one. So, uh, kind of assuming it doesn't mean that. Let me just double check it right, just in case. Yeah, I don't see anything that says that. So we'll just take it as it's it's, it's a simple strength advantage of three to one. Um. So, but if this unit with adjacent, even well. Well, that that's the thing. Do you consider it? Because if he's here, he's coming across the river, and that wouldn't be six plus two eight. It'd be four. So, hmm. Yeah, I might need. To, I'm just gonna have a quick look, see if I can find any questions on that. Uh, okay, I did indeed find somebody asked a question back in twenty eighteen, and Tom Cassell. Uh, that's how it's pronounced, sorry Tom. Um, he replied, well the question was, is it a simple 3 to 1 or do you consider it situationally? Which is what I'm, and uh, he's come back saying it was, it's a simple 3 to 1 that's used. Um, which seems strange, he gives a wee bit of an explanation of why that could be. But remember, again, the AI sometimes do things that you wouldn't do yourself, you know. I mean you know, would you come down and go here to attack across the river? Or would you come in here to attack not across the river? It's a bit of a no-brainer, but 
like I say, some of these things balance out. Uh, so, well, that would mean that it doesn't matter where he goes, if he goes here or here, they're going to have eight strength against three. So it's not it's not quite three to one. And now, could any of the other units join? Uh, one, two, three. Um, don't think so, actually, could they? One, two, three, four. Oh, no, actually, they could. They can get into this hex. Um, so, yes, that would turn it into... Because it does say all active... No, all active on-map units proximate to the target that have not yet moved. So, although Piper might be in here, these guys can reach here and still be adjacent to this unit. So... That's a successful greater than, well, 3 to 1 or greater um, advantage. Um, it doesn't really matter calculating that because these are the only two hexes that this unit can get to that's closer to its army objective anyway. So it wouldn't really matter. It's still going to move to one of them. It's not really considering the, you know, if I had the choice of another hex that was as close or closer, it then would come back to, uh, that wasn't adjacent to an allied unit, then it would look at this allied unit. But I don't believe it can reach. One, two, three. Right, one, two, three, four, five, six. Actually, is that, that's off camera, isn't it? I'll just zoom back a little bit, because I actually think you could do that. Um, so what we're looking for, one, two, three, four, it's got to be four or less away from the core objective. So it's one, two to break away, three, four, five, six. So we could get to this hex, which is one, two, three, four away as well. So there's another possibility. So because they want to prefer being again adjacent to an allied unit with a three to one advantage, it's not going to consider this hex, even if this hex happened to be closer. To the to the objective, so yeah, I know that's a wee bit off as well. Um, that's my belief anyway. So it's going to come to here or here, and when it comes down to the the tactical adjustments, it prefers an unoccupied hex, and it also prefers not across the river. Well, this is unoccupied. This is occupied, but it's, it would also be across the river. So. I think Mr. Piper's going to go one, two, and then four back into there. And that's with movement method 11. So he's now closer to his army objective. He's also satisfying the three to one about Well, he's not yet, but it is possible with other units. So. Okay, so now we're on to the next unit, so it'll be selector number two. So we go back again to movement method 10, uh, follow movement arrows. Uh, there's no arrows in this hex at all though, so we can't do that. So we're on to movement method 11 again. Move to a hex closer to, not the same distance from, the unit's army objective. So, and it's in St. Vith, which is just on camera, I think. So, where is he going to go again? Well. Again, if he can do, if there's more than one hex that was, there's going to be more than one hex, because this hex alone is closer, this hex is closer, this hex, you know, there's a few options. So he's going to try and get to something that gives a 3 to 1 strength advantage. So we know already, because we counted that this, they could go 1, 2, 3, 4 in that clear hex, and 5 into that hex. And then we know that would be a 3 to 1 advantage. But there could possibly be another hex. For instance, he could go one, two, three, four into there um, and be adjacent to this unit. And then what would he be? Five strength. And you also consider all German units adjacent. So that would be five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven against three so there that would be a three to one advantage too 
So then you've got to look at the next bullet, which is if no hex or more than one hex offers a 3 to 1 advantage, which is what we've got here, and move to the hex closest to the objective. Okay. So yeah, so if you did go to this one, it'd be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 away from his objective. And if you went to this one, it'd be 1, 2, 3, 4 away. So he's going to prefer that. Just think... I'll just have a glance in case I've missed any other possibilities. To be honest, no, because I think with that tiebreaker being closer to the army objective, you know, if there was possibilities up here, for instance, they're going to be further away. So, so yeah, so unit two is going to move one, two, three, four, and then into there for five. So then we go back to unit three. And he's going to be the same, no arrows, and he's going to do exactly the same thing. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Um, yeah. So then we're moving on to unit four, which is of the 12th SS. So we've got unit four, five, and six all stacked there. Um, again, back to movement method 10. Uh, now he does have an arrow. But it just takes him into the iron, he would have to stop, so that's not any good. So again, we're looking at moving closer to our objective and trying to get this 3 to 1 advantage. So on the other wheel, this might be slightly different. Okay, I'm pretty sure these units, well, we should be able to look at them individually. I'm just going to move into here, I think. There's going to be a few possible hexes that are closer to this army objective. But the only allied unit that he's going to be able to get adjacent to is here, and just by moving into here, I think, I'm pretty sure there's nothing else. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And if he was in there, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, so obviously this is a hex closer to his army objective. Now, if he moves in there himself, this is five strength in here, so we need 15 strength. But we'll count adjacent units too, so that's... 8 plus the 5 that he's bringing is only 13 but then he's got two buddies in there that are they're um, part of the condition too they, they, they're proximate as well obviously so we've got a total of what did I say 4, 8 16, 21 against 5 so yes there is so I don't think I can see another possible X because it's 3 for him to move into here and another two to move in that broken egg so he can't get to adjacent to this unit so I'm going to go with that so and then the two units underneath are going to do the exact same you know? so I'm just going to move them all as a stack I mean I should um, obviously I'm, the proper way to do it is move unit four first then go back then move five then six but uh, it's quite a straightforward situation there so uh yeah, that wasn't too painful. Um, wasn't as bad as I thought once you see it. Um, it's quite clever the way it works. Um, so we've got two possible, well, two places where an attack could potentially take place. Um, that's all the units moved, isn't it? Uh, we're not missing one. Oh no, yeah. Piper and his two buddies are there and then that's the three 12th SS units, right? So now we're going to look at German attack determination. So we're going to look at the Piper being the lead unit because he's uh, selector number one and he can only attack this hex. So we'll look at the, if he's going to go ahead with that. Okay, so we're counting the strength of this, which is six. Um, uh, Yeah, and we're counting these two units. Now, we're not counting the 66 core unit underneath because um, he's not active. Now, if we had the salt coordination and the support card box, then we would consider that. We would add that to the the situational strength, but we don't have we don't have any other cards in, uh, in the box. So, that's... Uh, they're both five, aren't they? Yeah, so we've got 16 there, but, 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 we've got, then we want the situational strength, and we've got half the units coming across the river. Well, they're half coming across the river. 
So this is full strength. So we're going to get 11 against 3 at the moment. And then he is in a forest, isn't he? Yeah, and he's got an IP as well. So add, or, add to or subtract from defending strength for any of the following defender situations. Any of the following. Uh, yeah, he gets a plus one for each of these, doesn't he? It's only, it's only the bottom one where it shows... Yeah, yeah. So he's in a forest, he's going to get plus one. He's got an improved position, he's going to get plus one. Uh, I just realised if he'd been adjacent to a supply unit as well, he would have got a plus one. But um, where was it I moved? Did I move that unit there? Ah, I couldn't have moved them up there. Right, right not, not to worry. Um, so that's plus two. Um, yeah, so plus two. So he's five. And we've got, what did I say, 11 against 5. So that's us. So it's only 2 to 1 odds, so we're going to have to roll the dice. Because it's between 1 and 1 and 4 to 1. Uh, that's right, I feel like I'm missing something, but... Yeah, there's no reserves. You've got to look at the possibility of reserves coming in, but there's none of them. Yeah, okay, so 2 to 1 odds. So, I'm going to get the dice here. Now, the modifier is going to be a minus one for 16th of December. Um, and this time we have a weeks in the attack and he doesn't. So, there's a minus one for that as well. Um, it's not an army card and there's no support card. So, it's a minus two to this die roll. A three again. Things. We've never had anything above a three yet. Apart from when I rolled the ten on the on the Wonder Height unit. That was cool. Um Okay, so well, I'm pretty sure this could go ahead again then. So three minus two is one. Cancel if only defender elite or only defender armor. Well that is not the case. So we're going ahead with this attack. So let's just bash on here. Oh, we can see if we can get this day finished today. Um, so we're going to draw a combat tactic. Yes. Yeah, we're going to draw a combat tactic. And okay, so it's Panzer Army card. So uh, that means artillery and assault coordination they get for that. Yeah. So, okay, that's going to bring in that 66 core guy that's underneath as well. So, fair enough. And there's not, there's not a support card, so we don't get to use that to combat attack attack. There's no reserves. Um, we could play a card, well, we can't. We'll, it's air power anyway, so we can't play a card. So now we're just onto the drawing off chat. So let's work out the odds now because that's slightly changed. So this unit down the bottom is going to join the attack because of the assault coordination. And remember also that they now get to ignore one hit. So, um, so it's only going to add one strength, that isn't it? Because this is across the river, so that's going to be six. Oh, but it is, yeah, it is going to help, isn't it? So six and six, 12 against three. Remember, we're just considering three now, so it is um, uh, 41 odds. Um, now, chip pools are uh, one, two, three, and four for the units, four. One for the extra steps, five. One for a week, six. Two combat tactics is eight. So, this is a bit meatier a fight for them. Um, 41 odds, 8 chip pools. We're in a forest, we've got an IP, we're green though, and we're all infantry, so... Yeah, well, we get chips like the last one, when <laughs> this guy down here. Uh, well, he's just off the camera. Oh, what's he doing? Where are we? 
yeah, this guy, he survived, he survived this attack, so it's possible. Um, okay, uh, right, so we'll just start drawing the chits. Well, we'll just draw eight chits and see what's what, so I'll get them on. Well, well, there you go. It's nice to be on the other side of <laughs> the forest chits. Um, that's two two great results I've had in the combat. It just shows you uh, sometimes a lucky draw of the chits. Um, this was Disperse on Supply on the other side. No defender adjacent, unfortunately. This is the first chit I drew, but um, the third chit I drew was, was this one. D minus two for being in the forest. This has got combat engineers on the front, uh, the back side. Or is it the front side? Or whatever. Um, but I wasn't played anyway. Um, and then there was a bit of a roller coaster here. They got a couple of hits. Then we got an R forest. Then they got an R hat. Then we got another forest. So, um, one, two, three, four, and four against, isn't it? So it's a null attack, isn't it? No hits to him. Bear in mind, they would have been able to ignore one because of salt coronation, but um, no hits to us. And we have, we're keeping our IP as well. We're not even losing the IP. So another great result. I think this has been a really good start to the day. Um, I think I mentioned that last night that um, my German solo started uh, really well as well. And uh, then I started feeling like everyone was getting against me. <laughs> but uh, yeah. I had my lucky moments, I, I have to admit. Um, okay, so that's that combat over. Oh yeah, we've got another combat to consider, haven't we? Right, so that's that car, combat tactic discarded. So now we're going back to look at, this is unit number four, so he's a, he's a, he would be the lead unit and we're considering attacking here. So, uh, right, yeah, I need to go back to 9.5, don't I? So, yeah, so it's only considering these three units. I mean, although these units are adjacent, we don't bring them into the consideration yet. If we happen to draw combat attack and it's assault coordination again, then that's great, they, they've all joined. But um, we need to determine if they're going to attack first. So... Day three units, I think, add up to 13. I should probably just double check. Yeah, they're two fours and a five. Eh? So 13. Um, these units are not. They're in the woods, hex, in the town. So not in a forest. Not approved, improved position. Adjacent to a supply, the allied unit. Right, they're going to get a plus one for that. Um, and that's that. So that is six. I would say 13 to six. So it's two to one odds again. So it's another dice roll. That, um, yeah, I, I don't suppose we'd be disappointed to let them have an attack, I think, maybe. I mean, if they, if they brought in assault coordination as a combat attack, that might make things a bit hairier, but... Uh, so, modifiers are the 16th, now the units aren't elite, so that doesn't count, uh, it's not an army card, and there's no support card, so they're only getting a minus one to this. Four, it's another roll, low roll, but is this low enough this time? Uh, four, so that takes it down to three, so cancel if less than one and a half to one, well they've got two to one. Or attacking from one hex. Well, there you go. So they're going to cancel because they are only attacking from this hex. These units are, haven't. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we've not drawn a combat attack to yet. Well, this is only to decide if we attack first. So the, the, it does say cancel if less than one and a half to one or attacking from one hex. So they're going to cancel. So. Now we would go back, and although we were just considering units went to number four, we've got five underneath, but it, it does, does just stop there because 
Um, and I said to a friend what I'm wanting to say. Yeah, it's just, it's uh, just the after the bit where you do the dice rolling. So, continue attack check sequence. After completing the attack or if the lead unit is not eligible to attack, check to determine if the next active German unit of sending you order is eligible to attack an adjacent enemy occupied hex. And then continue checking units. Uh, but, you're only allowed, only one attack check is lead unit. Uh, meaning that if it's adjacent to more than one allied occupied unit, you work out which one it'll uh, check for its attack and it's based on situational strength. We'll get around to that. Um, but he doesn't get to then look at another, if there was another allied unit adjacent, he doesn't then get to, he's done his check. And there's only one combat per unit. A German unit, uh, no, that's not what I'm looking for. Yeah, it's 9.53. One, cha- one attack check per allied unit. A given allied unit may be the subject of only one attack check in a given German activation. Thus, if an attack check against a given allied occupied hex fails, the hex is not eligible to be checked again during the current activation. So that's the situation we're in. Unit 5 underneath, he can only do a check on that unit. He's not adjacent to anything else. So this has already had a check that's failed. So these two just automatically fail or they, they don't go ahead and make the check. Um, so, yeah, that's it. That's us. So back to what we're doing outside. That's a smooth try to attack. Remove eligible active units to reserves. Well, again, all the units moved that were. So we're, we'll see that um, as the game moves on, you'll see that happening. Um, and um, that's it. IPs don't come in yet. Well, they've all moved anyway, and there's no dispersal. So that's impulse over. <coughs> Excuse me. And that's the last card of the Germans. Um, so we've got that one last card to play, but um, as usual, this video is dragging on. Hopefully, hopefully, once we get through this whole day, I can try and skip some of the stuff. But uh, you probably noticed before if you watched any of the stuff, uh, I say that and then end up <laughs> going over it all again. So again, it's maybe how I'm enjoying doing it. Um, I don't want to make a mistake, so I'm trying to be. A th- as thorough as possible but right I'll take a pause there and we'll get back with the last allied impulse of the day shortly okay cheers guys hi all right let's get the end of the 16th over and um the last card to be played with allied impulse uh, now I could bring out on units, I think we talked about that before. The fact that there's, it's probably better wait until tomorrow before I. And this this would only allow me to bring out one unit with a raise the alarm event. Um, so yeah, I I think I'm going to do what I said. I'm going to activate the units and activate the all the units in the core. We've just got these three units here. Um. And yeah, I'm going to move this guy back into St. Vith, so that's going to lose the, the roadblock. Now, I could move this guy back in as well, but he's sitting across the river. It's a woods hex. Um, he's adjacent to his buddy, which we're seeing is quite important. Um, and he would be able to build an IP. And um, obviously the other guys here, which which held his ground really well. Um, I'm not hundred percent sure if I should be trying to move them back. The fact I can only move them one hex. Once we get into the seventeenth, then it might have been uh, a better option. Eh? Well, I'm saying that <laughs> it's actually it's it'd be two. It'd be three movement to move into there anyway. So he's only going to be able to move that one hex. I think I'm just going to leave him there. Um, or is that silly? Yeah, I I think I will. So, 
I'm going to weave that unit and I'm going to weave this unit. So this unit's going to build an IP. And that's going to be that. Short and sweet. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think so. I see, I'm not I'm not hundred percent sure. I think moving this guy back to here it just lets them move forward. But they're they're gonna attack. They're more than likely gonna attack the United game, but this is what the situation was, wasn't it? And you can see they've all ready, right? Let's have a wee look at the bigger picture. That's as much as I can kinda of squeeze in, so you can see the situation the They've broke through a little bit here. They've actually moved past this unit. Um, the 58 core, the 47th haven't really got moving, but they'll come through here. So we need a bit more defense in this area. I mean, we talked about Bustle and moving this guy down to Bustle and that. We should have time to do all that, but this time the Germans are going to have access to all their cards. So um, it's going to be a bit more interesting as we move into the 17th, I think. Uh, okay, so that sample's over. I'll move that wee cube that was to say that they were at today. We don't need to mark the 18th because we're going on a new day and that doesn't matter. Um, so what were we doing? End of day, check the victory conditions. Well, again, it's the same thing. It doesn't kick in until the 20th, which I think was the same for the German soul. Uh, discard m my hand and draw a pile. Obviously, if I still had cards left right now, I'd just have to discard them. And if I had cards in my draw pile, they'd all just get wasted. So, obviously, you're trying to avoid that at all costs. Uh, return combat chips to the cup. I will do that. Remove all disperse now of fuel markers. Well, I think we had a couple of disperse units, but we managed to remove them, didn't we? So, I had one, but there's none on the board now. Uh, check detachment markers. Well, I'm not going to them yet. And advance the day marker on the calendar. And you'll notice, like I said, oh, we up there. Maybe we can zoom in a little bit. You'll notice that there's still a um, German reserve unit. And uh, the reason he's still there is you don't get to play the army group card because it happens in the setup. And like I say, when you draw that for any reason. Uh, the units in the reserve units box come uh, sorry the units in the calendar come down to the reserve units box but um, as we've not drawn that card we'll draw it on the 17th and then there's one they've got one unit in the 17th so the unit in the 17th and the 16th calendar box will come down to the reserve units and then if there's any cards to add from the reserve then we would add them so yeah that's about it so I think we can cut things there and I'll maybe try and upload another video. I've got a few bits lying there. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to try and upload and um, let you have a look and catch my mistakes before I then moved on. But um, uh, it just sometimes doesn't go that way time-wise. It takes quite a bit of time to like upload the video and also join it together and if there's any com I, w I like to watch them back and see if there's any comments I want to make but um, so hopefully there's nothing major and if there's if there's a couple of little things I did catch um, now I've not looked back in that video yet but remember we talked um, this attack happened and we took it the Germans took an A hit and I, I reduced this guy and then I seem to recall again I'm not 100% but I'm 95% sure that we played assault coordination in that attack which would have um, allowed him to ignore that hat. So I put him back to full strength and once I do see it again, if I've got that wrong, I can just re reduce that guy again. But um, like I say, I'm 95% sure he, sh he should be full strength. Okay, I'll get all that tidied up and we'll come back with the reserve phase starting on December the 17th. Okay guys, cheers. Right, okay, just one last thing before I wrap up here. Um, I did get a reply to the post up. After I posted it, I thought that was a daft one to ask about if the combat engineers um, as a support card was, was applicable. It was adding one strength and I should have just 
we'll have to that and see that as uh, Martin came back and said that yes, it was considered um applicable, uh, an applicable combat tactic that benefits the attacker. Um, it basically it basically just said yes, and he said since it's not part, it's not part of one of the special cases in twelve point three one. That's the ones that, that I read out to you. Um, just going back here quickly. Um, you know, reinforce battle. If there's no air that can reinforce, fix artillery if it's beyond the range. Yada, yada, yada. But um, actually, when I initially read them, thought they were examples of situations that would not apply. But the way he's stating that is, that is the actual special cases. Um and like I, I replied to him saying I didn't I didn't realize the, these were the exclusive things that could um negate it from being applicable, uh, but um I think yeah I think uh, he's probably right that it's these conditions here, and it, you don't need to think about anything else, and you certainly don't need to think about things that <laughs> clearly do uh, benefit something <laughs> by giving it an extra strength so. Bit of a daft one there, guys. Um, so my bad with that one. I think uh, I, I, don't, I we played it the right way, but um, I don't think there was any need to go looking for answers for that. Okay, I'll get away just now, and um, I'll back with the seventeenth soon. Okay, guys, cheers.